Conference. We will do our State of the University Address. Uh, Cliff Smart came down this morning, sat with us at our Administrative Council meeting uh, to start off with. He's brought uh, a couple of guests from Springfield. We have uh, Rachel Dockery, who is, uh, Rachel, would you stand up and give a, give a wave? Rachel is the new uh, legal counsel for Missouri State University and is visiting our campus for the first time. And Suzanne uh, Shaw, is the new Vice President for Marketing, uh, visiting our campus for the first time, and later this afternoon, I'll be taking them around and showing them uh, West Plains. So without any further introduction, I'll have Cliff Smart come to the podium and tell you about the state of Missouri State University. Good morning. Uh, as we have done for the past three years, Drew and I will divide our talk today. He will focus primarily on this campus and I will focus primarily but not exclusively on what is happening on the Springfield campus. Our theme today is raising the profile of the university. Um, and almost everything we do really should raise our profile when we think about it and that includes enrollment growth, improving our facilities, adding academic programs, conducting and publishing meaningful research, partnering with others to improve our community and state and grow our economy, improving compensation for faculty and staff, conducting signature events, like the Public Affairs Conference and the Missouri Public Affairs Hall of Fame, performing 50,000 hours of community service as you all did here last year, growing our international engagement activities and so on. You get the idea. Uh, I think we had a very successful year last year on both of our campuses. We will discuss some of those achievements today as well as plans to build on those achievements in the coming years. Before I jump into that, um, let me update you on what happened, uh, what has happened recently to our uh, state appropriations. The results of the veto session were mostly favorable. Only two of the sales tax exemption bills became law. The governor's vetoes on the remainder of these bills were sustained. Why do we care about that? Um, uh, the result of that was that uh, the new performance funding money, and that's about $4 million for our uh, system, will be released. Um, the second year of the OT money and the added money to expand the health programs on the West Plains campus, that's $1,325,000, is still being withheld. But we are optimistic that it will be released sometime during this academic year, and I can assure you we are working hard and lobbying hard to make that happen. $500,000 of that money is designated for the expansion of health care programs, allied health programs, here in West Plains on this campus, and so you all have uh, a, a direct stake in that. I do think, though, given those results, that our decision to hold tuition flat and move ahead with the compensation increases and other new programs has mostly be vindicated. We'll know if it was completely vindicated by the end of uh, uh, the fiscal year. Uh, with that said, I would like to look ahead uh, to this year. Um, in Springfield, we have completed the third year of the Long Range Plan, which is entitled Fulfilling Our Promise, and we are now beginning the fourth year of that plan. A and to make sure that we addressed all of the main elements of that plan, we have organized our goals for this academic year, 2014-15, into six topics, and they are the six topics that are contained in that plan, and they are on the board now. We have also added two goals uh, to this year's goals, not specifically set forth in the plan, and they deal with athletics and West Plains integration. On that last uh, goal, the focus is to make sure that each campus is thinking about and interacting with the other, on everything from bookstore operations to the purchase of new software systems to the adding of new academic programs. I would encourage everyone to review all of the eight goals and the specific objectives set out under each. You can do so by going to the website that is on the screen now. 
Um, while I'm not going to speak at length about increasing compensation of our employees today, I do want to emphasize that that goal remains both a board priority and a personal priority. It is specifically found in this year's goals under goal five, valuing and supporting people. We will continue to work to increase compensation for all our employees when revenue increases, even though there are, are many, many needs and, and, and calls uh, for that money. Our board has set some specific policies and priorities for, work, for us to work on <clears throat> excuse me, in year four of the plan, all of which will raise our profile if we are successful. I'm going to quickly go through seven of those with you this morning. The, the first is uh, value. And value means that we will keep cost affordable for students while offering rigorous high quality programs. Governor Nixon, our board, Drew, and I all believe college must remain affordable for working and middle class families. College cannot be just for the affluent. You have probably heard me say that many times. It continues to be a core principle and value of our administration. And moreover, student debt cannot continue to expand indefinitely. So we will scrutinize all proposed tuition and fee increases and approve only those that significantly improve the programs and services we offer. We have and will expand need-based scholarships, including the first ever graduate scholarship program on the Springfield campus, which will begin in January. But access to college is important only if the Education offered is truly also of value. Thus, our board has approved, and I anticipate will continue to approve, specific differential tuition, tuition increases when necessary to improve facilities, replace or upgrade, upgrade equipment, fund travel, or provide scholarships. This policy will expand our reputation as the value option for Missouri students, support continued enrollment growth, and allow us to improve the quality of our academic programs. Enrollment growth is the second topic I wanted to address this morning. Uh, both campuses have been successful here this year. Uh, the data from Springfield uh, is on the board and you see the number of students that we have on campus, 22,395. That is a system enrollment record. If we move to the next slide, uh, you'll see some specific um, um, uh, enrollment success as well, for example, we have the most graduate students ever enrolled on our campus. Um, and uh, the West Plains data is also good. Drew will give the de details on this, but uh, let me say I believe Missouri State West Plains was the only two-year school to grow this year in Missouri. And so uh, I told the Administrative Council this morning that was an extraordinarily uh, strong achievement in performance uh, this year. Overall, both campuses growing uh, allowed us to set a system enrollment record this fall. And uh, you see that, uh, that number on the board as well. We are over 24,000 students for the first time in our history, uh, right at 24,500 system-wide this year. Um, this growth raises our profile as much as anything we do. Thriving universities generally grow, struggling ones generally shrink. It also results in additional funding, even as state funding sometimes lags behind as it has this last year. It will remain a critical part of all of our future plans. The next priority is to uh, increase student retention rates. Uh, the first to second year retention rate of our first time in college students used to be called freshmen. They don't all now enter as freshmen as a result of dual credit. Some of them enter as sophomores, et cetera. And so we refer to them as first time in college students. On the Springfield campus, our number keeping those students the second year, how many come back, has been about 75% for each of the last four years. And if you actually look at the numbers here, it's, it's slightly ticked down um, in the last uh, three years. Um, the next slide shows retention rates by college. 
the line that's highlighted there is for our undecided students and it is below, slightly below all of the other colleges except for one. I would also tell you the rates of our three main public competitors to the Springfield campus all have uh, retention rates higher than ours. Uh, retention is not just a problem in the first to second years. As you can see in this next slide, we lose students all along the way, uh, including in uh, their senior year. And so for whatever reason, uh, this last year, over 500 students that we classified as seniors stopped going to college last year on the Springfield campus and didn't graduate. Um, obviously, that then is reflected in our graduation rate, uh, as shown in this next slide. That, uh, so first to second year retention right at 75 percent, six year graduation rate right at 55 uh, percent. Um, there are similar issues on the West Plains campus. Neither campus, frankly, has a very good trend line on retention, uh, and we must do better if we are to accomplish our mission of helping educate Missourians so that 60% have a higher education credential by the next decade. This is critical to the economic success of our state. It is particularly critical to the seven county area that the West Plains campus serves, given that the college uh, credential rate in these counties is typically in the 10 to 15% of the population. Missouri as a whole is about 36% of its popu adult population has a um, post-secondary uh, credential of some kind. Um, in Springfield, part of the solution will come from helping students make better connections during the first several weeks of school. Thus, we are retooling our orientation, family programs, and living learning communities. Part of the solution is better connecting students to academic departments. So we are evaluating how we can improve advising connect students to their departments earlier, and have an even better experience in that introduction to college class that we call GEP 101. Uh, the picture of that woman on the screen there, Kelly Wood, uh, will lead to the academic part of that effort on the Springfield campus. Part of the solution also uh, will be more defined career paths from the first two years through graduation, no matter where those first two years of undergraduate undergraduate education is taken. I will tell you that retention is a complicated issue. We will not be able to change retention rates overnight or even within a year or two, but I believe we can make progress on both campuses here if we make it a priority. And I know Dr. Bennett will address that uh, issue on, on this campus here when he speaks in a few minutes. The fourth item of emphasis is facilities improvement. This was the top board priority last year in Springfield and is a top board priority this year as well. Uh, last year, as a result of the passage of a $50 per semester bare fee by the students, we focused primarily on improving our athletic and recreation facilities, and the change in the appearance of the campus has been stunning. I have literally received hundreds of positive comments from the changes uh, all over the community and from many from students. These improvements really helped change our profile on the Springfield campus. Frankly, we had the profile or athletically of a Division II or III school, even though we have played Division I sports for several decades, given the fact that five sports shared a stadium. Now we have the profile of a Division I school, that makes a huge difference to student recruitment and to our community profile. And you should know that 95% of the $27 million of funding from these projects came either from that designated student fee or from private gifts. This year we are building two new buildings on the Springfield campus, a welcome center, again funded completely by private money, and a new healthcare building uh, which we thought was going to be funded in part by that state appropriation that's been withheld, um, uh, which will house a new occupational therapy program, the nurse anesthesia program, and the physician's assistance program, as well as freeing up space in the professional building 
to expand the other health problems programs. Just as you all are expanding your health, allied health programs in West Plains, there's a huge demand for health uh, education in Springfield. We need additional space as we are, if we are to uh, expand those programs and address those needs. <clears throat> we're, also, <clears throat> excuse me, we're also completely renovating Pummel Hall, one of our older buildings built in the 1950s, renovating the fifth floor of the Morris Center as growth in the English language and foreign language institutes have exploded, renovating Sun Villa, our oldest apartment uh, residence hall, which had fallen into disrepair, and are beginning the first stage of renovating and reorganizing the library. The following year, we moved to expanding laboratory spaces and the renovation of some of our older academic buildings if, if revenue bonds are issued by the state. And I will tell you that will be our top legislative priority this year. And the issuance of revenue bonds would also result in capital funds for this campus uh, and a new or a renovated building that Dr. Bennett may talk about um, today as well. Fifth, new academic programs raise our profile, maybe even more than anything. And several important ones are starting this fall. Uh, you see the graduate program slide that is up there now. We began the uh, uh, pharmacy program in collaboration with UMKC. Its first uh, cohort of 31 students began this fall. Uh, and you'll see uh, the Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia practice uh, that we received HLC approval on last week. Next slide. Uh, other programs uh, are on this slide as well. And then the next slide will show our undergraduate programs that are new this year. And finally, our online programs continue to expand as well. Uh, all of these programs are available online. And the hours taken online continue to increase as well, particularly our summer credit. That uh, blue line shows you that this past summer, 40% of the credit hours were taken online. Why is that important? because students from all over the state who go to Springfield study often go somewhere else in the summer. They're either working, they're on study away, uh, they have an internship program, they're home, and uh, the increase in the online hours offered in the summer allows them to take meaningful classes from Missouri State University, whether they're in St. Louis, Kansas City, West Plains, Tulsa, Little Rock, Chicago, New York, uh, China, or anywhere else. Uh, we're at about 10% of uh, classes offered during the year being online. Frankly, that has been a push the last three years. We've gotten to a point where we think we are competitive and are servicing the needs of our students there, and so I really don't anticipate much significant growth in that piece uh, going forward. You know, um, the online programs, though, have real uh, value and ramifications here as students can continue their education towards a bachelor's or master's degree through multiple pathways, through ITV, typically offered at Gone Hall, through seated and blended classes in certain programs on the West Plains campus, or completely online. And so those are all valuable methods for people who are place bound, uh, who can't be at the Springfield campus for them to continue to advance their education and therefore advance their careers. Faculty research uh, is topic number six. Faculty research raises the university's profile and is meaningful for many reasons. Um, in Springfield, our faculty invol are involved in significant creative works. Uh, that is shown in the next two slides. Um, our newest research publication uh, is the second issue of Mind's Eye, which is slide 24. Here it is, and I brought about 65 of these if you would like to take one. Uh, they are all on the table right outside uh, this hall. Um, this publication highlights faculty doing cutting edge research. Uh, the man on the cover, Wen Ping, is involved in our grapevine biotechnology research, primarily at Mountain Grove. Uh, there was a great article on that, and many of the other faculty that are making a difference in our community um, and raising the profile of our university. Of course, the most important element of research is the impact it has on students. And you can see in this slide, um, 
that we had the most students complete a graduate thesis this year uh, as any time in the university's history. And then finally, I want to mention our new strategic planning initiative. Uh, we are about to begin what we're calling a visioning process. We've named it, it the Missouri State Vision, our passion for excellence. Emphasis on that word, excellence, our passion for excellence. Since 1995, Missouri State has taken planning seriously. That has served the university well, and it has grown and developed as a result. Uh, since then, the Springfield campus has been guided by a series of four long-range plans. These documents have been developed with broad input, listed precise goals, and included accountability measures. The vast majority of the goals included in each of these plans have been accomplished. As you may know, our current Springfield long-range plan runs through June 30th of 2016. That means that during next year, 2015-16, we will focus on preparing a new plan which will go into effect July 1, 2016. The West Plains campus then typically takes the following year to prepare its long range plan so that they go hand in glove together with the Springfield uh, plan. In order to be more thoughtful in developing this new plan and in an effort to spread the work across a couple of years rather than to try to do it all in one, we will develop the new long range plan in phases over the next two years. This project is a result of a discussion our Board of Governors had at its August retreat this year. The goal of the strategic visioning project is to gain consensus on the assumptions and philosophical foundations from which the next two long range plans will be developed. To the extent possible, we want to identify the key issues in higher education and Missouri State will face in those five years. Again, this process should also guide the creation of the next long range plan here on the West Plains campus. The steering committee for the strategic visioning project has been named. We had our first meeting on October the 2nd. Dr. Bennett attended and will represent this campus on that steering committee. Soon we will name the specific topics and task forces to address each. The task force will include members from both on and off campus. It will include members from this community and this campus. Please do not hesitate to volunteer for one of these groups once you see what they are. If you have an interest in them, let Dr. Bennett know your interest. He will forward that to me and we will figure out how best you should be involved in this process. Students can be included in that as well. Um, we also plan to schedule a series of guest speakers to help stretch our thinking so that we're not just internally talking to each other about this. And then we will present our report in open meeting to the Board of Governors at their August 2015 retreat. Once finalized, the report will provide the foundation for developing the long range plan for 2016-21. And with the foundation established, we will be able to concentrate our work on the specific goals and tactics for that five year period. Let me conclude my portion of this talk with an update on the first two massive open online classes which are being offered this fall. And you see them on the board here. Two years ago, Dr. Frank Einholig, our provost at Springfield, and I convened a faculty task force to evaluate what role, if any, Missouri State should play in the new phenomenon called MOOCs, Massive Open Online Classes, which the so-called experts anticipate would put many traditional universities out of business. Of course, that hasn't happened. Our committee was chaired by Dr. Arden Miller, uh, a longtime faculty member in psychology who has designed and taught online classes for years. After working for most of a year, the committee concluded that we should develop some expertise in this model of delivering classes, but that we should only focus on subjects in our wheelhouse where we had expertise not shared by most other universities. So we developed two courses for this fall. They're going on right now. I think you can actually still sign up for them if you want to. Uh, the first is called Laura Ingalls Wilder exploring her work and writing life. My wife has signed up for that class. They're in week two. She's enjoying it very much. The second is entitled Ozark's History, Examining an American Culture. We've completed four weeks of that class. 
Uh, it is taught by one of our faculty on the Springfield campus, Brooks Blevins, whose expertise is in Ozark's history and culture. I am enrolled in it. So far, I'm doing reasonably well, and I am enjoying it very much. Most importantly, as of today, over 8,300 people have enrolled in these two classes. That's a third of our regular students. Uh, and so by offering these two, these two classes, we have expanded our reach. Um, uh, people are learning about our university, about our part of the state, about Missouri, about our culture, and we're promoting a lifetime of learning and it's free. It, it is exactly the epitome of what the public affairs mission that we have adopted is all about. Um, and we are able to do it for um, little cost. So we're excited about that. I think we will offer a, a second uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder class in the spring. Uh, we're still working on what the class would be from a year now. Um, all of this is on our, uh, on our website, Missouri State University Outreach. Uh, if you're interested in that, check it out. And uh, I think you too would learn, would learn much about the area uh, that we all proudly call home. With that, um, probably taking more time than I intended to, I will turn it over to Dr. Bennett to update you on the West Plains campus. And then of course, as always, we're both will be available for questions on any subject, whether we talked about it or not, at the conclusion of the talk. Thanks for coming this morning. Well, for uh, the West Plains campus, when we talk about value of affordability and quality, over the last seven years, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index for Central Missouri, has risen by 14%. Our tuition has risen by 11.8%. So we have not even raised tuition at the same level of inflation as we try to make our campus affordable. Uh, another way that we make our campus affordable is by our institutional scholarships and how we provide assistance to our, our students. You know, uh, in education, you pay your customer to use your product in some instances with an institutional scholarship. There are 13 community colleges in the state of Missouri. Um, they provide institutional support on average to 8% of their students. Missouri State University West Plains provides institutional support to 42% of our students. Now this does not mean the generous uh, endowments and scholarships that uh, private citizens have provided for our students. These are institutional scholarships and assistance are monies that we take from our budget, Missouri State University West Plains budget, to provide to our students. So we have worked long and hard to make sure that we kept tuition low and that we help our students who do come to make sure that it's affordable. As we speak to quality, uh, I know several of you have seen the video that uh, Will Mahan, one of our students who's back there in the booth, Will helped uh, as a student worker put that together and we've uh, shown that as a recap of our 50th year celebration. And I showed that at our Chamber of Commerce, I've showed it to faculty, I've showed it to our staff. But uh, let me just give you a quick recap of that seven minute video. I think I can do it in 30 seconds. 55,000 hours of community service valued at over $400,000. The first time we had over 100 honor students in our program. For the 18th consecutive year, we scored at or above the national average on the college assessment of academic proficiency. Met all five of our benchmark uh, criteria. A 1% increase in enrollment last year, a 3% increase in enrollment this year, which I'll discuss, a $2.5 million trade adjustment assistance community college career and training grant. Took me a while to practice that, two cups of coffee. And ranked number sixth in the country by Washington Monthly Magazine. 
Now that ranking, they come out with the, those rankings uh, every three years, so we, we actually maintain that ranking now for three years, ranked number six in the country. But as we talk about the quality of our program and the affordability of our program, many students are coming to Missouri State University West Plains and using their A-plus scholarship to come to the sixth best two-year school in the United States and some of the unique opportunities that we provide by having a full campus experience on our college. So I think we are doing well in this area. Enrollment, as I mentioned, we were up by uh, three percent, uh, as, as Cliff Smart mentioned, uh, at a time when two-year colleges across Missouri were down. As you look over the last 10 years, we have increased enrollment by 33 percent. Uh, a significant increase and a great accomplishment. Again, uh, it wouldn't happen if students did not believe that this was a quality institution. The enrollment uh, in the last couple of years and uh, probably for the future is coming from outside our seven county service area. As you can see that uh, it's increased by 67% in the last three years. We have students on our campus who are from St. Louis, from Kansas City, from uh, outside the Springfield area. Again, looking to use their A-plus scholarship at a fine institution, perhaps even participating in our internship program to go to China. This year, we've sent six interns this semester, not this year, this semester, We've sent six interns to China. Uh, if they are on A+, plus, A+, plus pays for their tuition, the university pays for their transportation and their boarding. They, are, they receive a stipend, which covers all of their meals. It's basically a semester at the same cost uh, of uh, going to school on the West Plains campus on the China campus. So those kind of opportunities are attracting students not just from West Plains and the surrounding six counties, but throughout the state of Missouri, and we have been growing in that area. This enrollment uh, increase is difficult to keep up with. Uh, as you see, our enrollment over the last uh, seven years has increased by 25%. Our faculty, have not matched that increase in student by student as there's a lag time between when uh, students arrive and when we add full-time faculty to our institution. But we have tried to keep up with the enrollment by adding new faculty and in fact we have over the last seven years a 33 percent increase in full-time faculty. This is significantly uh, significant in light of our state appropriations, which have only increased by 3%. Uh, again, I mentioned that for the last seven years, CPI, has, inflation has increased by 14%, our tuition only by 11.8%, uh, and we've had to do things by being more efficient, more effective, more creative, more innovative, because state appropriations have definitely not made up that difference. As Cliff said, we have a challenge in retention. Um, there's a saying in the Ozarks that there's no such thing as a hole in your side of the canoe. If we have a hole in the canoe, it affects us all, and retention is probably the biggest hole in our canoe right now. Um, the good news is that we have stabilized the hole over the last three years. And I believe that we now have the resources in place. If you remember that uh, increase in enrollment, but yet a dip in state appropriations, we have now, between uh, grants and other things, been able to put into place programs, starting off as pilot programs and then spreading across whole departments that we believe are going to address some of these issues. I know Michelle Branton is in the back. Uh, the director of our de developmental education program has done great things to help uh, assist us in having more students retained, but there are a whole list of things and programs that we are beginning to do that are just now coming into place, and I am confident that we are looking at this and addressing this. Uh, at our administrative council meeting today, we talked about uh, expanding our recruiting effort and task force to include a recruiting and retention effort 
task force. And I believe with everybody on the campus looking at this, implementing programs like this, that we're going to uh, improve our retention significantly. I do want to mention the Jump Start program, which we did this summer over a two-week period. Uh, for those students who score just below the level to go into regular college courses, they scored at the developmental math level. And we placed them in a program in two weeks, which was free, um, was uh, extensive and intensive, so it went from uh, uh, nine to five. But in two weeks, uh, about 50% of the students placed out of that uh, developmental math and into regular math. And the other uh, group, the other 50%, all, you know, most of them were almost at that stage. Uh, in the past, these students would have had to take in developmental math probably over two different semesters. Uh, so we saved them two semesters and about $800 for in a two-week program getting them jump-started. Innovative programs like this. This was a pilot. We look to improve on it, expand on it, and next year have even more students. But it's programs like that and the other programs that you see that I believe with all of us looking at retention, we will help this problem. I went to a, a conference in uh, Prescott, Arizona from the Rural Community College Alliance. Um, and I, before that, there was another conference for the uh, Council of North Central Community Colleges. And at, uh, at that particular conference, there was a session by the Hershen uh, Entertainment Business. They own Silver Dollar City. And it was management and uh, HR uh, issues that uh, they deal with and how to, um, how to be improve your organization. I was interested in improving our organization. Uh, and at that uh, conference, they talked about uh, Silver Dollar City by some of the executives. We had a kind of a behind the scenes look at uh, how they run Silver Dollar City. How many of you have been to Silver Dollar City? Just about you know, everybody's been to Silver Dollar City. You can go broke at Silver Dollar City, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> but at Silver Dollar City, they don't view the customer as a customer. They want to view the customer as a guest. And they try not to view their employees as employees, but they view their employees as host. And so when you go to Silver Dollar City, the goal, the effort, is that the host invites you in as a guest to, to that facility. They, they want you to have a positive experience. I thought that was unique, uh, interesting, and, and reflected on that. How, do, how would we put that into uh, an academic environment at Missouri State University, West Plains? And of course, uh, we talk about our students and our students' uh, customers, our, our customers. There is uh, some difference of opinion about that in, in that, you know, the customer is always right, and yet we sometimes have to tell a student, you're going to fail this course. Uh, you're always right, but you didn't put the right answers on this particular test. Uh, so it's not an exact fit where the customer is the student. And while we, uh, you know, our employees are friendly and outgoing and our, our faculty and staff, we're not exactly host. Uh, I think we are more than that. And whether you are in, on the faculty teaching in the classroom or you are a staff who is working to help a student to get financial aid, to help them manage their budget, help them prevent them from going into debt, or whether you are just modeling professional um, uh, behavior by coming to work on time and uh, helping uh, students uh, and greeting them in a, a positive manner. All of us, I believe, are mentors. And while these are our students and they're our customers, what they really are is our future. And so we are mentoring our future. And I believe everybody has, uh, can play an effort in the retention goal of helping more of our students be successful on our campus by looking at, uh, looking at how we mentor the future of these students on our campus. So that was something that I took away from a, from a conference that I went to. I wanted to talk a little bit about diversity and how we have improved significantly over time. First of all, as I point out, this particular slide starts at 75%. So there's, you know, there's another 75% of blue line back behind me this way, but so that in order you, that you can see, we have significantly increased the diversity on our campus 
And uh, as an example, the top slide 2014 was a 1% increase in diversity. We went from uh, 6.4 in 2013 to 7.4 uh, in uh, 2014. And in 2010, it was 4.7%. 4.7% of our students were uh, of an ethnic uh, diverse background. And we've improved that significantly over time. We've also done the same when we look at our faculty and staff over the last seven years. We have doubled, more than doubled, the number of uh, uh, racially diverse faculty and staff on our campus, almost doubled the percentage, uh, with a percentage now of about 8% of our faculty and staff. So if we expect our students to go out into the world and compete on a national basis in a global market, we certainly need to present them the opportunity to have conversations with people that don't look exactly like them, for them to uh, be able to experience people of a diverse background, and we appreciate that and work on that here at this campus. A uh, significant event last year was that we just uh, finally wrapped up last month or the month before that our HLC accreditation. As you know, in early April, the HLC visiting team came to our campus, had a site visit over a two, three day period, uh, produced a draft report which was exceptionally favorable, praised the dedication of our faculty and staff, noted many of the great things that we're doing on campus, uh, and recommended to the HLC that we be reaccredited. HLC approved that. Uh, as you know, HLC, the re HLC can give a report that ranges from, we recommend you not be reaccredited. We recommend that you be uh, reaccredited uh, re provisionally. We recommend that you are accredited with some major concerns that we're going to have another site visit to come and view. We recommend that you're accredited with some concerns that you can address in a report. We had two items which we will address in a report. Or we can recommend that you be accredited with no uh, uh, noted discrepancies whatsoever and you walk on water uh, and, and win the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, very few colleges get that type of accreditation. So the fact that we had uh, two issues which we will address in a report is in fact a very, very favorable accreditation visit and this process we will now continue for another 10 years of accreditation. We will have more site visits. We will have a couple of site visits but that is not a result of the um, review. It's a result of the new pathway toward accreditation. All schools will have uh, more site visits than the, the, the old days where you, you got accredited for 10 years, see you in 10 years, uh, that they're, they're moving away from that. But by and large, an extremely positive uh, experience for us. We have several new academic programs. I'm not going to go through all of them uh, listed on the next couple of slides. They are uh, very heavy into uh, allied health and agriculture, although we, we have some others as well. But one thing that I will say is that uh, we are working toward putting our gen ed degree to be able to take that online. Uh, recently, the Springfield faculty uh, approved a gen ed bachelor's degree on their campus. There are some several more steps that need to go through before that's officially approved by the Higher Learning Commission and some other things. But uh, I'm, I'm confident that that will be approved. And with a bachelor's gen ed degree on the Springfield campus and the opportunity for students to get a gen ed degree on our campus as an associate, I believe that we will increase the number of students who are going on to Springfield, uh, particularly those from around the state that might want to participate in our program, uh, which is a proven quality program. Uh, let me talk about some of the uh, quality successes that you see up there. Um, Yannick Brad Bradford was a enology st student in the VESTA program, took all of her classes online with the exception of an internship. She is studying to be a sommelier, lives in Florida, and had such a positive experience with this program, she's a single mother, 
She brought her children and her parents and drove up to insisting that she walk across the stage at graduation. A really great success story. Uh, Stephen Steele, one of our former math tutors, is a graduate. Desh uh, Denisha Hogue is one of our core of opportunity students. She is from St. Louis, lives in the SHU uh, apartments. Um, but this is one of the students that are coming from outside our seven county service area. Uh, Austin Thompson has graduated, is on the Springfield campus. I believe he was from Gainesville. Uh, Christy Airy, if you remember, Christy Airy was one of our former Grizzly cheerleaders, married a Grizzly cheerleader. That's not a requirement to be a Grizzly cheerleader. Was uh, in the respiratory care program, graduated from the res with a degree in respiratory care, and now works at Springfield at Cox in respiratory care. Uh, Justin Jamison, one of our basketball players from last year, originally from Ohio. He was originally a baseball player, hurt his arm, changed to basketball, came here, did a fantastic job, uh, and is now has transferred to Texas Tech College. And uh, Rebecca Feston uh, took most of her classes, she's from Mountain Grove, took most of her classes at the Mountain Grove campus. She is now on the Springfield campus. So I know that we deal with problems every day. I know that we talk about diminishing resources and increasing uh, needs and the need to be innovative to help solve all these problems. But these are the faces of just the tip of the iceberg of the results that you are producing at Missouri State West Plains. And as we mentioned at, at Administrative Council from time to time, uh, we have graduation once a year. We batch that and we feel really great when all of those students walk across the stage. But if you take out all of the holidays and all of the weekends, on this campus we graduate a student every day and two on Friday. So we're doing a great job. I think the future is bright and Cliff and I would be glad to take your questions now.